which is slightly more useful because it means that you've asked it to do something, it's now gone and done it and told you, by the way, to that, so you can get it the next step. If you have some way of wrapping your, your model locking mechanisms and your model wrapping, sort of build a layer on top of that that gives you asynchronous operations throughout, throughout the entire thing, which is, which is much easier to, to deal with. Do that. Um, okay, so the way, the way you do that is not a good way. I always use a collection of modules. There's not one module, there's, there's a bunch of modules in fact. That's the current version of the drawing that's in Japan. I'm fine with this first manual, but I always can conduct it. So, what do we have now? The principal object we have is a loop object. And the loop object is the thing that ultimately talks to your practice. Your underlying working block, selector pile, or the pile, or whatever. It's got what I call an imagined constructor, which says that it's going to, it's going to work out whatever it says to go wrong. It's going to have a look at all the most popular things on the machine. It's going to try and work out what is the best way to do this. So you have to try and do the next, you'll probably get me pop, you'll have the BSD, you'll probably get the paper, you'll have the code. Pick the right button for the other. It, it's all abstract to get. Um, it's an explicit object rather than some of the other unlocking uh, 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 benches, which has a couple of interesting properties, which uh, at this time of year I will discuss it. Um, so that's, that's just sort of your core object. Yeah, there, there are also a number of, of um, subclasses that talk to other vendors because it's highly likely to be made out of another one. So if you're writing some kind of GPK-based program that you use GDIF, which is GDIF, um, any of the, the, the top ones, the selected poll ones, X, do have an uh, interface that will expose the other variety of selected or dead poll So we haven't had a whole bunch of existing code that you can select or poll just in case. You can uh, use those and we will generally play most of the code. They are uh, something past my ex, you're writing a, a code <coughs> um, and it can be that one. It can be the and I can go to it and just see what's happening. Otherwise, it basically works. Um, um, yeah, I'll show you something. Now I'll show you something. So, so let's have a look. We are going to start to loop. Print what it is in my phone. Oh well, it's good to do something. So we're going to ask it to watch for some, some uh, uh, watch a part handle for readability. So we've got this study. And when it becomes readable, we're going to call this read. You read the data. You'll notice this isn't actually a data, this is a non-logical one. We've not we've not been given the data yet. This is this is a great open this is the bottom low level interface. This, this is a slide showing you from the bottom. But uh, eventually, when it's going to be initially, we're going to read some data, we're going to print out the plot of these data. And we just tell the program we're going to print out the plot. Is that the program? That's the new talk. So we say, hello, this is cool, this is hello. That's how we support it. That's how we keep it safe. Obviously, that's uh, not very useful yet. So, what, what we can do is we want to represent bits of our program as little objects. Now, all of these objects are going to be, uh, are, are all going to be subclasses ultimately of this general, general idea of an object called a notifier. A notifier is, is something which puts your loop and gives you events. Or you can ask a few things. The notifier itself is a concrete class, you can construct it, but it doesn't do anything like that, it just sits there. What it does mean that is a container, so you can build trees in the notifier, which gets to be quite useful. So, for example, if you, you're, you're building a web server, I'm uh, sorry, a web app that's, 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 that's an actual web server, so you'll do it in port 80, that'll be a notifier, you'll then 
accept a connection from a um, web browser somewhere, so that would be another connection, which can be a little child of it, in fact, one. And you can build up these mysteries, which can get a nice little piece of the So, what's the point of these web browsers? Well, pretty boring one. It's a handle. That's my object. It can wrap two wire objects because POSIX is a bit annoying and says that if it comes in one handle, you can use one wrap, goes to another part of the right two. We can write the same one, it's kind of useful. So I decided, let's kind of make this up a bit. And we'll say that a handle object could actually wrap two far handles, one green and one right. That's very good. Gives you events on we we write readiness. Again, it's not done anything, but it, it, it's the bottom, it's the bottom most bad. So we can use this, we can use this in two ways for a Java program. You can take a database class, so you can conduct a subclass of it, override some methods to deal with what to do when to be all the right You can use it as one for the job you want an adapter object, which says that you're going to construct a real object and then give it some values or uh, that in some way tell it how to do the game. Um, so we can either handle our, our replaying this by making this in some in some uh, the written methods, or you can give them in pullback functions, which tends to be more useful in the test cases or sort of small model. It's a code that don't really make much sense in the in the class. So let's So this is kind of similar to before. It's not a lot of time. So we can chuck our loop down here and we add our handle. So the handle. Well, it has a constructor, so it's normal. We give it a read handle, we give it an on read ready uh, event handler, and it's large and the same as before. And then, more or less does the same thing as good. But we now wrap this up in an object. This is, this is a nice, nice real object that we can pass around. We could have a subclass of it, we can pass it all around. And that's where the cow starts to come. So, um, I'll throw it in there if you like. Now, I just, well, this, this here is a reference 
to the the, 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 um, the stream bus, the scaler, that is storing the data from the software. So it comes in, it's ready to buffer. The only handler gets past a reference and a buffer so that you can inspect it and do what you want with it. Now in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to call tear it out and return zero, because they've been just kind of This one here is very important. What we're saying here is that it is, it's important to you to read the data out of the buffer. So typically what you'll do is you'll inspect the map and you'll say, is there, is there an entire record? Does it contain CRNA? No, okay. Then there's nothing interesting. So you'll just return zero to the web. Not even if you're the buffer, so it's there, it's going to come out. Alternatively, you'll decide, oh yes, it contains CRNA. So you can you know, use a substitute red X or substrate or whatever it is you're doing. You can eat that string from the beginning. And you return one. So you return one to say, I've eaten that, but you know, I'm happy to have more of it. And it's still today in the buffer. So, uh, so you can quite easily write the code that is going to deal with a stream of records by just writing the code for handling one record and so you never see is it there yet or not. Some of you can do it for me. So I could. I could very this one as well. Just really quickly. Signals, unique signals, nice. Let's get it, boring. 
way for a signal, getting both commitment clients. The benefit of a, of a signal is a um, process ID. So, this last time process, you send it maybe some data, it's good into the data, I'll we'll get that in a minute. Uh, and, um, probably good. Um, eventually, you might exit. When it exits, you get sent a signal to the um, And you call it in and get the status. Uh, you find out how it is. So, again, we're going to wrap that all up in a nice little bit. So, we can just get on it. So, I'll show you both these ones. They okay, look very similar. So, and that goes to the signal. And we'll go here again. So, I'll pop it. We're going to wait for secret. We're going to wait for secret. Uh, we keep the signal message for it. Just sit there. Shall I type the secret? Oh, I said it. And uh, I'm just going to sit there. Now I can keep it on it. In a real program, you can notice it. So what would you do with this? Especially when we're going for one trip. And the technique is that level is far from correct. But I'll show you this from the bottom up. Um, so, um, so, don't be more that big. Now, that's just setting up child process and making it interesting. Yeah. And you keep the ones you can do is put a message, wait for a second, put a message, and it's it. The, the reason why I put underscore X there, it's nothing to do about basically, it's simply that in a whole program, you have you have to have all the, the end blocks and the object response. And if you call four, you can have two processes. They both think they're only all these objects. And if you were going to do something like this, you're going to do something quickly and then exit, you want to call underscore exit, which literally exits the process straight away. It means that the person trying to bring up all the objects that are sitting in memory, doesn't try to do anything at any blocks. So they're just going to call underscore exit. Right? So that's what you're trying to do. So that's what you're trying to do. 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 So, there we go. So, we have our now a pin watcher, which is watching the first study. So, we can exit. Uh, okay. uh, it gets past the question mark, which is the exit space in the process. It goes to either way or the rest of it in this next. So, okay. And now, great surprise, we've got a lot of good. Try process, it's sneaking, it exits. That's it. That's it. Okay, it's there. It's got nothing else to do. I, uh, at some point, I'm, uh, I'm thinking about whether you know, the loop object realizes that realize that there is nothing else there for it to do. And it will sit there for all eternity and have it uh, complain about that. I'm quite the same best way to do that. Can't really use technical, there's nothing else there.
spring one. We have a read handle here. So, so uh, to, to use the uh, protocol stream, you just say, oh, it's the protocol stream, give it the exact same on read handle, and write it to it, and write it to it. But rather than giving it a handle, you give it a transport object. Transport is sort of the, the idea of the other one making it to the internet. And then that seems to be much nicer way to, uh, to do things. The, um,
should just be, you will get bytes in there, it's not what you're going to hold register. So, we'll be processing these things later. So, um, so, that's, so, so, so we're going to look at our column bytes there. So, yeah, so uh, while, while we're still working on our line, we've got line feeds, it's all lined up, but I'll have to say, eventually, our lines will do it. And that's a bit. Now, there's a uh, lot of there's no logic in there, and we'll work on the topic next time. Handle you can do it on close handler and have a lot to do when it gets close. If you don't, it just decides, okay, we also don't care, I'll just drop it. So it just does a remove tile, it drops the thing on the floor, as you get it on with like it's just another nice little thing. It's the kind of thing that you want to do. I'll 
be able to change open this file handle and I'll change the run variables and things. And it's kind of sloppiness. So rather than that, everything you might want to do to change the environment the child press is running, it's it's asked to invite the uh the set up. I don't actually have a browser probably tested with, but I tried it 
with um, Chrome and working on Cracker Works. Being investigated. Being investigated is because I actually went that on first before I even put up there. Years, 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 years ago. Um, that's why I put a name. Um, and respond to the German questions and the custom codes and respond to the HTTP question sorts of things. You can respond to the HTTP and 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 the HTTP Yeah, I'm sorry. 